John here guys and today we're talking about the easiest drone kit that you can get for a beginner or if you just want to fly inside your house or give it to somebody inexperienced and it is the iFlight A65 combo. We want combos, combos. Along with the iFlight IF8 radio and you're going to need some batteries so you can pair that with the iFlight full send pack. Now, just a disclaimer, iFlight did send all this to me so that I could make them a tutorial video on how to bind these together. A review was not part of the deal, but I like this so much that I wanted to make a review combo out there. Now, disclaimer, this is not the best micro you can buy. I still feel like that is the Mobula 6. However, if you go down that route, you're going to need to assemble quite a lot of gear for you to be able to use and actually fly it. And then you're gonna have to go down the rabbit hole of learning how to get all of the pieces to work with each other, what's compatible with that. A lot of people just wanna know, tell me three things I can buy, buy them all from one place, get them shipped to my house with prime shipping, turn it on, follow the directions, and get flying within minutes. And this is the best all-around combo. This is actually a very, very good uh, micro tiny whoop style drone. It uses brushless motors on there. It has these tiny little 0802, 22,000 kV motors, and it uses iFlight's tiny little R81 receiver. Now that's key because it works directly with this little iFlight IF8 radio, and it's so easy to bind up. Some of these you actually have to plug into a computer. You don't need to plug this thing into a computer and install Betaflight or any of the apps to get it to run. That's the benefit of why this is so easy. Now, why does this not one why does this one not fly as good? Be mostly because of this very uh, tough canopy. It adds a little bit of extra weight compared to some of the other models out there. But what you do get for that is durability. You have to worry about crashing this thing less than a lot of the other models out there on the market. And I like these iFlight Full Send 300 milliamp batteries a little bit better than the other ones for beginners because there's no wires hanging off of them and they fit just perfectly in there and when you fit it in there and you plug in your connector, you have no free hanging wire. Now, sometimes that wire that's hanging off is gonna get stuck on things and this has a minimal amount of that. So it's gonna work great. You can see a nice little LED. So let's check out some of the footage. It's very maneuverable, very controllable. Um, I like that it doesn't have too much power. So this is perfect for inexperienced users. For those of you that are experienced, um, you don't ever want something you're going to fly inside to be overpowered. Why? Because you hit the throttle a little bit too much and it's going to fly straight into the ceiling. Um, so having something like this that has a mid-range amount of power is actually going to be better for control. It's kind of like how when you go to the autocross events, the guys in Miatas somehow are beating like all the guys in the Corvettes and Lamborghinis. Uh, very same principle this has the perfect amount of power for the weight and it flies great so this is a nice beginner radio it actually has hobby grade switches it has hobby grade real gimbals uh, and there's only two buttons on here so you don't have to learn OpenTX although it does have it installed it also has a module bay if you want to expand later on and I think this is just a great um, kit to be able to get yourself I'll have links for all this stuff in the description so you, I'll take the guesswork away from you so that you can get started in this hobby. This is also a perfect radio for flying simulator. So this very cheap option can be paired with the $20 Velocidrone or $20 liftoff simulators so that you can learn to fly um, a larger drone as you're learning to fly one of these micro ones and then you'll be perfectly ready to take the next step. What do you think in the comments, guys? Um, if you were a beginner and this kit was available, would you have gotten it? I got a radio when I first started that was not as compatible as this one is with different protocols. It was about the same price and I ended up um, outgrowing it very, very soon. This one you still may outgrow eventually, but I think it's gonna last you a bit longer because you can start your first few full-size models with it. You can simulate it with it. You can keep it for a travel radio because compared to a full-size radio like this, it is just so tiny. So this can be taken with you anywhere.
What micros are you flying right now, guys? Winter is coming. My favorite for this season, if you're curious, is still the Mobula 6 Express LRS version. The new one, I have a link up here for that review. But if you're a beginner and you don't want to have to piece together all the custom stuff, that thing, I'm using $300 of radio equipment to fly that thing. I'm using $600 worth of goggle equipment to fly that thing. This, you can put together a kit for closer to $200 for everything. Get up in the air. Thanks, guys. Today we're going to tell you how to bind iFlight's R81 receiver to iFlight's IF8 radio control. This is the Micro A65 drone, but it'll work for any of the iFlight R81 receiver. First you plug in the craft to a battery, then you're going to want to push the bind button for two seconds. So I can see the bind button right there. I'm going to hold it down for two seconds. Once the receiver light turns a solid red, that indicates that it's in bind mode. So now we are ready to bind this radio up. So in order to bind it, first you're going to turn it on. If you see it's red, you're going to put all the switches to the back position and the left stick down. Now you're ready to bind. Then you're going to move your stick to the center for the R81 receiver on the left side. Left stick center, then hold the bind button right here for two seconds. When it's flashing blue, that indicates that it is binding. So you're going to let that bind for just a minute. And then after it's bound, now it's green and now it's bound and ready to go. So we can test this out. First, in order to test it, you're going to want to remove power then put power back in. Now, if I arm, it should start spinning the props. 
So first thing we're going to do to arm is put the left switch down. And the arm switch is going to be this back left one. Now we're ready to take off. <laughs> 